Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this week's video. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at making some basic destructible assets. And we're also going to set up some uh, physics fields so then we can manipulate those destructible objects, um, either with a lion trace, either with a, a, bo a bomb, or just any other way that you want to do it. Um, I I'll show you just the basics, just enough for you to be able to uh, do this yourself and sort of add on to it. I do intend on building on this uh, destruction system and just make sort of more complex systems. Um, but just for this video, I just want to give like an introduction to it, um, uh, just enough to get you started. So with that said, let's just jump straight into it and let's get making some destruction. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this as quick as possible. I'm going to try and one take the whole thing. Um, so let's start with the creating a destructible asset. So what you want to do is you want to select any asset in your game world or drag in a new asset essentially. Um, or pick one from your content browser. What you want to do is you want to select that object. I'm going to pick a cube. Now, what I will tell you is um, when we create this uh, destructible version, it, it will replace the asset in the world. So if it's something you want to keep in the exact position, I recommend you make a duplicate. It will stay in the world, but it will be a fractured version of it. Um, so I'll select this chamfered cube, for example, and I'm going to go over to the fractured mode up in the top left. I'm going to select mode and I'm going to press fracture. Now, within the fracture mode, you should get this fracture hierarchy up in the top right-hand corner. If you don't get that, you can open find that in the window and editor modes and then fracture hierarchy. Um, I'm only saying that because the first time I opened it myself, it didn't appear and it's going to be useful for you. Um, so with the geometry that you want to fracture selected, in the top left-hand corner, you want to select new and then it's going to ask you to create a geometry 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 collection now a geometry collection is essentially every time you break a shape into multiple pieces uh, this is just going to keep all the data together of how them chunks sit together um, and essentially how they stick together and how they break it's just a collection of the chunks that you're going to create um, so give it an appropriate name and find an appropriate folder to save in and then click create geometry collection you'll see that now the object that you have fractured is bright yellow uh, and this is because currently all the bones that it is made up of are being shown as colors. Now, because you've only made um, the object itself um, sort of a, a collection, it hasn't been fractured yet. The whole piece is, a set, is essentially a bone. Now, if we go down to fracture on the left hand side and we pick uniform, um, you can see that you get this um, sort of outline of the shape that it's going to use to make the slices um, and then when we press fracture which I'm going to keep the settings as completely default you'll see now we get all these different kind of puzzle pieces and in your fracture hierarchy um, you can see that our level zero um, shape has now been broken up into uh, 20 different pieces so you've got piece one, piece two, piece three, piece four, and so on and so forth until you get to your 20th piece. Uh, and then what you can do is uh, with uh, zero selected, you can fracture again, and those 20 pieces have been further broken down, and now I've got 118 pieces. Uh, so for example, my 20th piece, if I scroll to the bottom, um, is this... Uh, it's been broken into quite a, a lot of pieces actually. So my 20th piece has now been broken up into several smaller pieces. So now I've got 118 fractured pieces and I'm going to do that one more time. I'm just going to go back to the top, select zero. I'm going to fracture that one more time and now I've got 324 fractured pieces. Now all this data is going to be saved inside your uh, geometry collection component. And uh, for me, that's it for the fractured mode. So I'm just going to go back to... Uh, select and now you can see that your fractured shape is here in all of its colorful nature now if you don't want that colorful uh, display which you're probably not going to want to uh, with your object selected under the search if you type in bone you'll see uh, show bone colors you can untick that and you'll just see the shape as it uh, should be so what we'll do, we'll close that. And just before we continue, there is one other thing I want to mention, but I'm not going to go into too much detail, is with your shape selected, if you scroll down on TC Chaos Physics, um, essentially there's a thing at the moment called clustering. And when I mentioned the word uh, level zero, um, you've got a couple of layers. 
Um, so every time you fractured your object, if I quickly go back into fracture mode, it might be better to explain. Um, can I collapse all? No, I can't. So essentially, you've got here uh, level 0, level 1, level 2. And you can see here on the level statistics, you've got 0, 1, 2, and 3. And that's what makes up the different layers of your uh, shape. So when you first break it, you'll break into level 1. And then the, the damage then will go down to level 2 and level 3. And the pieces should get smaller as, as you break it down. Now, with that in mind, um, then pieces are clustered together. Now, they require a different amount of damage per layer to be broken. So if you imagine your whole shape together should take the maximum damage to start with. And then as your uh, object breaks down into smaller pieces, the amount of damage that it requires to break that down into even smaller pieces should reduce with the size of the piece you're breaking. If that was a lot of pieces in damage and breaking, sorry. Um, but that information's here under the clustering of, of the index 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you can add more layers as you fracture stuff into more pieces of how much damage them layers will need to take. That's as far as I'm going to go into it for now. I might briefly go over it a bit further in this video but um if you run into any issues or if there's any damage problems you might be able to resolve it by adjusting these values with that being said we need a way of destroying this now i, I have to thank another youtuber i think it's gaming with john I, apologies if that's not right i can't remember um but essentially i, I couldn't get my bp projectile to break my object and i wasn't too sure so i did a bit of searching um, and he um, did something in his video which was the solution and that's to um, slightly adjust the projectile to, to, to be a bit bigger so it causes more damage. Now I have took the sound out of this um, template because the projectile sound is far too loud for the recording um, so I've took that out. Um, but what we're going to do is to make this ship um, be destroyed by the projectile we're going to go to the content draw we're going to go to first person blueprints and we're going to find that projectile now i personally use lion traces in most of my shooting games um, so we'll get onto that um, but i'm not going to put too much effort into this projectile i am sorry um but i do plan on following this video with more destruction videos um where i might touch on the subject again in the future um what we're going to do to make this work is we're going to select the sphere and we're going to change its collision mode to block all and we're going to slightly adjust its scale to 0.2 on each axis. I don't know why I did that, it's uniform. Let's hit compile, let's play and then now when we fire a projectile at it, it destroys itself into pieces. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave that. Um, but I'm going to move on to the line trace now. Um, so I'm going to save that, compile and close that. Now, I have already created a line trace system. Now, because I have done that, I've also created, um, I've also already released a video just before this one of how to create a line trace. And it's this exact line trace system. Um, so if you want to make that, there should be a card up above or just go back a video and you'll be able to create this line trace system. Um, and we're going to use this to create um, a sort of physics field to create the destruction. So, um, once you've got a line trace system, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change this gun to use the line trace system instead of the uh, projectile. Um, and just, it's really basic and just how it looks is essentially it just fires a line. Um, and I want this line trace to apply some force to this cube and it burst into pieces now unfortunately it's not that simple um, but there are things that we can do so what we need to do um, in order to get that to work is we're going to add uh, we're going to add a field and it's a field system and essentially the physics system in unreal requires fields um, which are essentially physics fields uh, to to interact with other physics objects and in our case is our destructible cube um, and one other thing that we're going to need to make this work properly is a radial fall off um, you can just add that component to the gun 
what I've got here is from the previous video, we outputted the display name of what we were hitting. I'm just going to remove that because it's not necessary for this video. And we've just got our line trace here. Um, and actually, I will require the break hit result. So I'll keep that. Um, but after that, that's pretty much it. So what you want to do is drag in your field system. And from your field system, we want to add a transient field. Now, there are a couple of fields that you can pick. There's transient, persistent, and there's one other one which I can't think of. But essentially, they're all slightly different. The transient field is a temporary field that once it applies itself to a physics object, it sort of self-destructs, in a sense. And then there's another one which is... Here's a... what I found. Okay, I don't know why Siri chirped up there. Um, the other field is a persistent field. And as the name suggested, it sticks around until it's told to be removed from the world. Um, they may be better if they're like um, more of like static meshes in your world that may um, affect dynamic things. Um, I guess they'll come into play when you know you need them. Um, but just be aware that there are slightly different fields. Anyway, for our weapon, we need it to be temporary. We just only want it to apply when we shoot. Um, and where we want it to apply to is um, where we've hit. So we're going to use this location now. So I'm just going to create a little bit more space. I got a bit off, off topic there. But once you've added a transient field, just make sure you tick this box to say enable. Because uh, we want to make sure that it is enabled. Um, and the field type is going to be an external strain. Now, this external strain needs some data behind where it should affect and um, we do that with the field node and that's where we get our radial fall off to help us out so let's drag the radial fall off in and we're going to add um, radial is it add or is it set set radial fall off great so with this fall off um, something that you're going to be like you really need to pay attention to is the field magnitude Essentially, this is the physics strength for the impact force um, is, is the way I like to see it. And it's how much um, of a, a force do you need to apply to this object to break it. Now, if we cast back to when we look at the cluster data from before, we can see that um, index zero or level zero requires 500,000 force or damage um, to actually break. So that's going to be our magnitude uh, for our field so let's go back to our rifle our field magnitude is going to be 500,000 now what I would recommend you do is promote this to a variable I'll call it mag oh wrong way around uh, magnitude and then in brackets I put impact force uh, just to be a bit more descriptive impact force I'm going to hit compile so then I can set this figure on the right hand side to 500,000 um, that should then break the uh, the cube in theory. The other thing that we need is a, a sphere radius. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to say how big do we want this field to be. Now, if you think about the size of a bullet, it's quite small. Now, unfortunately, because we're, we're trying to apply physics to a, a larger object, if you put this size down to sort of like 1 or 10, um, there's not really going to be enough surface area to put enough force on the object to break it. So unfortunately, you've got to kind of lie a little bit, but this isn't visible. Um, so I'm going to set the sphere radius to 20. Uh, that's really as small as I've been able to get it, where it still works reasonably well. And then the other thing that we need is a center position. Where do we want this field to start from? And a good place is the location of our hit result. So you can either pick location or impact point is probably a, a, a little bit closer, but it's there or thereabouts. So we've got our radius, we've got our magnitude, we've got our position, and then we just plug the return value into our field node, and we can connect this up. And that's that. So now in theory, if I try and shoot this cube, we should get some destruction. So hit compile, let's hit play. And let's pick up the weapon and let's try and shoot it. Okay, so we're not getting the destruction I expected. Right, so I'll just double check to make sure that we are 
doing everything right. Do, do, do. External strand, there is no fall off type. Okay, I'm just gonna increase this radius just a little bit to 50 and just see if it's um, actually just this being a bit funny. Okay, so maybe the numbers weren't quite um, right there. Um, so 50 seems to have done a little bit better of a job. Um, I have had it work with other shapes. Maybe the shape is quite dependent on it. Or maybe it's just the way that this particular object has fractured. With this being a one take, I've not really tested this in the background. So slightly increasing the radius there has helped me out there. So as you can see, as I'm shooting it, um, I'm really getting that destructive feel. Now, where I'm clicking multiple times, this isn't taking a cumulatively... A, a cum I can't say the word. Um... As I'm adding damage to it, this damage isn't collecting, um, unfortunately. This uh, field type isn't set up for that. Um, but I am intending to cover that in another video where you can sort of shoot an object a couple of times. The damage will build up to the point where it does break. Um, unfortunately, I'm just hitting the um, objects here in uh, really peculiar places. And with the radius of that um, transient field, it's just being the factor though which is giving it this effect um, that might be close enough for what you want but just in case it looks like it's um, a cumulative damage um, it, it isn't unfortunately I just thought I'd get that out there so that's the line trace one I said what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to making um, a, a blueprint of damage so you can attach this to grenades or um, other assets in the world which are going to cause damage to to your field so let's move on to that straight away so really we are going to be copying this uh, blueprint and just taking it into its own blueprint um, so to save yourself some time you can just select all this and copy it you can do that by highlighting it and pressing ctrl c i'm going to go back now to my first person map i'm going to open up a content draw and i'm just going to create a new blueprint class this is going to be an actor, and this is going to be BP, um, I'm going to say external, exter what am I doing here, external stress, I'm going to open that up, I'm going to uh, mount this at the top. So this is going to be slightly different, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sphere collision. Uh, and this is going to be sort of the area of effect which is going to uh, cause damage. Um, now, what I'm going to do straight off the bat is... I'm going to leave the sphere radius, but what I'm going to do is from an event begin play, I'm going to do set sphere radius. And I'm going to drag this and promote this to a variable. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get rid of the word in sphere radius. I'm going to set this to instance editable and expose on spawn. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because when you choose to spawn this in, you can say what size of a radius it's going to be. So the reason you want to do that is if you create a sort of grenade and you know the radius of your grenade is going to be um, a damage area of 300. You can just tell this straight away that you want to damage stuff within a radius of 300. And you don't have to go into the blueprint and manually change it. Um, if you're going to make a, new, a separate blueprint for each case, you may not need to do this. And you can just set the size within the object itself. Uh, and that's absolutely fine. But I've just decided to do it that way. Um, I'm just going to go back to the viewport just for um, ease. But um, we're going to, with that sphere, um, we're also going to add in that field system. Uh, field system. And then we're also going to add in the radial radial fall off so over to the blueprint now so we've got our event begin play we've got um, our sphere which is uh, you know being sized up let's say I'm gonna move that right over and um, what you want to do or what you can do for example is set a delay 
uh, and then you can, can promote this to a variable also um, delay and if you don't want to delay just set this to zero um, but you might find in certain cases a grenade example when you throw the grenade and you spawn this transient field you might not want the explosion to happen instantly you might want to have it happen after a split second um, and this gives you the ability to do that I guess I'm just future proofing this blueprint um, but once you've got a delay going what we need to do then is paste in all the stuff that we did on the previous one so we're adding in this transient field what we're going to do is we just click compile and look to see what's complaining this one's complaining so in the area around the text so don't hover over the text in this gray area if you right click it will allow you to create the exact um, variable you need uh, which is copied that over and then you can set the damage here to 500,000 which matches our um, damage threshold on our uh, on our shape we need a, a sphere radius now this is pulled over the 50 that we set from before but we want our sphere radius to come from our sphere collision so what we're going to do is we're going to get a scaled sphere radius um, and the reason we go for scaled is just in case it's a, a, an, an unusual scale um, and it's sort of more of an oval shape it'll it'll round that plug that in and also the center of this sphere is where we want our center position to be so we can drag off this again and get actor location oh no it's not sorry it's gets world location my uh, my apologies uh, and once you plug that in that's more or less the whole thing done now the only other thing is here this blueprint itself is essentially only for adding stress to an object so in the case of a grenade you'll throw the grenade it explodes you'll create this transient field uh, blueprint with it um, the grenade will destroy itself and disappear but this won't so it's probably worth adding another delay at the end of 0.2 seconds and then saying destroy uh, essentially what this does is once it's applied that physical force to your destructible object it will then destroy itself <coughs> sorry hit compile and what we're going to do is i haven't got a grenade set up in this uh, project and I, i'm not going to waste your time by doing it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to simulate this being thrown at this object by getting it close enough that it should do something so that's within the field of this corner now hopefully there's a, a cluster in this corner that's going to take enough damage uh, for it to break uh, but when we press play we should find out but what I am going to do is uh, because I've dragged that in if I scroll to the top because I've set my um, rate my sphere radius to be exposed you can see that it's zero here I'm going to set this to 100 uh, and then when we press play I'll turn around and you can see that the corner has been blown off this cube um, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to get my event begin player event begin player my player start and I'm going to drag it over here which I'm not doing a very good job of and I'm going to rotate that around come on so I can see this happen uh, let's hit play and you can see that this is creating damage to the um, bottom corner of this. What I'm going to do is, come on, I'm going to move this up, put it inside the object, press play, and I can see that that now has created an external stress uh, and and caused this object to burst. Now I mentioned earlier that you can you can spawn this um, in the world; it will do its damage. Um, what I'll do is I'll just slightly modify my line trace to do that. I'm just going to delete this transient field we've added from before. So we have our line trace and then when we hit an object, what we want to do is spawn actor from class. Now this isn't a great way of doing it, but it's an example for how you can use it in other ways. Uh, you want to find your BP, BP external stress. Where is it? Here it is, external stress. 
Now, it requires a transform to be spawned by. We're going to split this, and we need a location to spawn it in. I'm just going to simply select my impact point. I'm going to leave the rotation and scale, um, and that's pretty much it. It's asking me for a sphere radius, so because this is a gun that's causing this, I'm just going to keep my radius nice and small for that sort of uh, small effect, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to set that to 50. I'm going to hit compile. And if you remember, this is being spawned, but it destroys itself after a delay. Um, so this is going to be very quick, and it's just going to disappear. It's not going to clog up your... Um, your world outliner with spawned items is going to handle itself well. Oh, and of course we left the stress inside it, so let's delete that. Let's go back now and get our gun. Turn back around, and if we shoot this now, we are shooting external stress at this object. And if we quickly do a shift F1 and look at our world outliner, there is no damage or external stress blueprint so that was meant to be a quick one take introduction to destruction um this was requested or it would the, the, the kind of question was asked within my discord channel so that leads me to if you want to contact me or request things or if you just want to have a chat there is a discord link down below you can come and chat if this video helped you please give me a like just so i know and if you want to leave me a comment showing me your appreciation or even uh, some comments about the video please do that down below if you want to see videos more like this, subscribe and you'll see videos every week if I keep to my schedule. And with that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day and see you next week.